Welcome back to Mayo Clinic Radio. I'm Dr. Tom Shives. And I'm Tracy McRae. Radiation therapy, it's an important part of treatment for a lot of cancers. In fact, more than half of all cancer patients receive one or more courses of radiation as part of their treatment. Mayo Clinic began offering a new type of radiation therapy, proton beam therapy, in 2015 on its Rochester, Minnesota campus, and just this year on Mayo Clinic's Arizona campus. Now, unlike standard radiation therapy using x-rays or photons, which travel all the way through a person's body, proton beam therapy uses highly charged particles called protons to go into the tumor, release their energy, and stop. And that allows higher doses of radiation to be more safely delivered to tumors with less risk to surrounding tissues. While proton therapy isn't necessary for all types of cancer, it is beneficial in the treatment of many types. It is beneficial in the treatment of many kinds of tumors, including brain, breast, and prostate, along with many pediatric cancers. Well, here to discuss proton beam therapy is Mayo Clinic radiation oncologist, Dr. Nadia Locke. Dr. Locke, welcome to the program. Nice to have you here. Thank you. Thank you for having me. So it is interesting. The, the proton beam facility at the Mayo Clinic is absolutely gorgeous from the outside, and I unfortunately have been on the inside, too, not as a patient, but uh, it's beautiful on the inside, too. Um, why did you open a proton beam facility at Mayo Clinic, and how does it compare? What's the difference uh, between proton beam and regular radiation? Uh, our department about 12 years ago had a retreat, and at that point we looked at the future of cancer treatment and felt like if we wanted to be able to provide the best, safest radiation care for our patients that we needed to pursue proton beam therapy. Uh, it took many years uh, to go through the data, the evidence of who would benefit from proton, which patients would benefit the most, to, to figure out what the best size facility, what's the right size for our patient population, people we see. And then during that time, there were developments, rapid developments and improvements in the proton machines that were being developed uh, that led us to, to, I would say, the, the perfect timing that we have of being able to open a spot scanning proton facility, which is the, the newest type, uh, and the right size for the, the population that we hope to serve. Uh, so it took many years of, of um, research to figure out what was the, the right type of facility for us. Uh, we looked very closely at the types of cancer patients we treat and the types of cancer patients we felt would benefit the most and uh, felt that the proton would allow us to treat children with all types of tumors, young, younger patients uh, with breast cancers, brain tumors, uh, even and, and certainly older patients that can benefit from the short-term reduction in toxicity, head and neck cancer, some lung tumors, uh, things like that. But, it, but that took quite a while to make sure that we had the right business model, that we were feeling like we were doing this uh, to, to the best interest, for the best interest of our patients. There are several proton beam centers around the country. Um, as you mentioned, th this one, however, is state of the art. I mean, the, the, the facilities and the technology has gotten better and better over the years, right? Absolutely. Our physicists actually work very closely with uh, Hitachi, the vendor that we ended up choosing to do our proton facility, and there are m many custom-made uh, features that our physicists help working with the Hitachi engineers designed. Uh, you may have heard that we use pencil beam or spot scanning type of proton beam that is being uh, retrofitted or commissioned in some of the other proton centers that are in the country, uh, but the spot that they're using is about um, half an inch to sometimes even bigger than that. So a fairly big ball of radiation, still not that fine-tuned to be able to carve around important structures like spinal cord or nerves or things like that. Um, with our work with Hitachi, we were able to get that spot down to about four millimeters, size of a pencil eraser. Uh, so so tell us what that means in, in terms of, of what you can treat and what it means for the patient. From what we can treat is we can treat tumors that are uh, I I complex shapes wrapped around critical structures like ra a, a spine tumor wrapped around the spinal cord or brain tumors wrapped around brain stem uh, and, and get a sharper edge of radiation around those complex shapes as opposed to the, the traditional proton where e even if they are using spot scanning, they have a, a golf ball that they're trying to, to use for laying down these spots and that doesn't allow you to curve around critical structures as well or what most most places are still using are not spot scanning where it's basically a, a proton beam that's been uh, feathered out and spread out uh, and then all you can do is shape the 
the far edge. So you can make it stop where you want it to stop, but on the way in, you're going to have a continuous dose of radiation, and it doesn't curve around the front edge of the tumor. All things that you can't do with conventional radiation. So with, with yes, with conventional radiation, we actually can conform or, con, or cover complex shapes with conventional radiation, but then you have the downside of that extra exit dose from all the different directions that we have to use to come in to get those fancy shapes. So with protons, you get, with, with pencil beam protons, you get the best of both worlds. You get to have that sharp edge and no exit dose, which the conventional radiation can give you a sharp edge, but it, you still have all the exit dose, the lower dose around it. Wow. With this, this, so you can stop the proton beam where you want to stop it. Exactly. I would imagine that anyone who is diagnosed with cancer and has to have radiation as part of that treatment says, oh, I would like to do that. <laughs> I would like to have the proton, <laughs> proton. beam. Uh, but that's not possible, is it? It's not. There, there are 17 um, facilities in the country right now. The, the plan is likely to, uh, in our nation, to go up to maybe 35 over the next 10 years. Uh, even with that, that's going to be only a small two to three percent of the patients getting radiation. You know, even when we double the proton a a capacity. And so, you know, most of the time when we talk to people and we're trying to to convince insurers or or you know our 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 institution that this is important, we can say, well, if we reduce this exit dose, for example, on an average patient, we're we're cutting down the exit dose, um, which is equivalent to about. You know, 50,000 mammograms or 5,000 chest CTs. This is a this is a fairly significant amount of radiation, um, but we don't have room to treat everybody with this type of technology. So we have tried to use it where we feel like that reduction is the most important. We're cutting down those low doses, and low is relative. You know, you talk to people about 5,000 extra chest CTs. They don't feel like that's low, but but low. But with uh, compared to the side effects that that will cause over your lifetime, we've had to make choices based on who should who will benefit the most when you only have a certain number of spots in this whole country that we can use for proton. So who's the ideal candidate? The ideal candidates, there's two kinds. So first of all, there's the patients that will benefit because they have long-term side effects that we can prevent with protons. And those are, the, the younger you are, the longer you have to live to have those long-term complications of radiation. So if you're younger, you have longer to live before you'd have brain atrophy, for example, from brain radiation. The younger you are, the atrophy, more... Atrophy, brain, brain shrinkage. Brain shrinkage from radiation, which could affect your memory or your thinking, your clear, clarity of thinking. And the younger you are, the more time you have to develop those problems. Uh, and the younger you are, the more sensitive you are to those problems. So uh, brain tumors in kids. Brain tumors in kids, and, and even some of our young adults that have average lifespans of 15 to 20 years with low-grade brain tumors, have, that's plenty of time to have long-term side effects from radiation. Uh, for uh, another large group of our patients are women with left-sided breast cancers. They have, uh, we've increasingly appreciated that radiation to the left side of our chest with the heart underneath can cause earlier heart problems, heart attacks, heart failure. And by doing protons, we can eliminate that exit dose into the heart and reduce their risk for heart complications later on in life. Mm -hmm. uh, the younger you are, the more time you have to develop that kind of problem as well. All right, so those are two uh, clear-cut indications, uh, brain tumors in younger individuals and women with breast cancer on the left side. Yes, other indications are for tumors where it's really hard with conventional radiation to get a high enough dose in safely. Some of the sarcomas uh, and that develop in unresectable areas like the base of the brain uh, or sometimes in, in uh, around the spine where it's hard to get cancer-type margins, wide margins. Uh, sarcomas are resistant to radiation. You need very high doses, but the spinal cord is right nearby. And we can get higher doses in safely to some radio-resistant tumors that are near critical structures. And then short-term complications. Patients with head and neck cancers have been shown to have fewer, need, less need for feeding tube, le less problem with nutrition because they have less problem with swallowing and sores, for example, in their mouth. So there's short-term and long-term reasons why protons may be beneficial. And wow. finally, is it covered by insurance? It, it is covered by insurance, but not all insurances. Um, we've been fairly selective in Rochester, and we have tried to basically only use protons for patients that we feel really would benefit. And so our insurance approval rate's about 90%. You know, so not all, even with multiple appeals, sometimes we don't succeed. Um, but we are, I think, being appropriately selective and making sure that we're picking patients that really the case is pretty compelling. So eventually you can 
get through. <laughs> yeah, exciting technology, and I'm so glad we now have it here at the Mayo Clinic. And we have a facility in Arizona that just opened up also, right? Yes, absolutely. It's yeah. a mirror image, and they are very, treating very similar cases to what we're treating as well. All right, Dr. Nadia Locke, radiation oncologist, Mayo Clinic in Rochester. Thanks so much. Thank you.